What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to properly debug Python code in NeoVim. So let us get right into it. All right, so I'm really excited about this video because I always like to talk about NeoVim. Today, we're going to learn how to properly debug Python code in NeoVim. And a little spoiler, it's going to be quite impressive. So this is my debugging interface here. We're going to talk about this in a second. But the basic idea of debugging is we want to pause the code execution, we want to see what's happening, we want to troubleshoot, we want to analyze the current state of the program. And here I have some very basic sample code, I have a factorial function, a find primes function. Uh, and I also do some addition of two floating point numbers down here. So number one and number two, and the goal is to make them add up to 0 0.3. If that's the case, we get correct sum, otherwise we get incorrect sum. So to show you a use case right away, let's go, let's type in some stuff here. And let's say I want to add 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 in order to get 0 0.3. When I run this, I get incorrect sum and not correct sum. Now let's say I have no idea why this is happening, what I can do now is debugging. I'm going to show you my config here later on in the video, but I want to show you how easily I can debug now in NeoVim um, using my setup. So I can just go to the to the um, line where the addition is happening, I can set a simple breakpoint, and then I can just start start the debugging. Now what you see is I can still enter everything down here. So I can do my factorial stuff, my prime number stuff. And then I can also say 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And now the program freezes, I reach the breakpoint, and I can see what's happening. So this is the current line, this is the current state of variables and values. And what I can do now is I can say, for example, uh, step over. So go to the next step, I can either click on this button here, or I can use my key bind. And this results in going to the next line of code. Now you can see already here, that the value of this sum nums variable is 0 0.3000000004. Um, so that is basically floating point uh, precision problems. We're not going to talk about this in this video today. This is just a simple example that I want to use. But you can see I can see the value right away. I can also see it here on the left side. And now I can continue, I can step over, I can step into if I want to. Uh, in my case, now I can just continue, I can end the program, and then I can hide the interface again. Uh, and I can do a, a lot more stuff like this, I can go here, for example, set a breakpoint, uh, then run the script. And then uh, when I get to my input, I want to step over, I want to input something, let's say, 10. And now here, what I can do, for example, is I can step into because now I'm talking about my function factorial, I implemented this function. So I want to also see what's happening inside of it. So I can press here. This brings me into this function. Now I can do step over, step over, step over, step over, and so on, whatever I want to do here. And I can also continue until the next breakpoint. So that's basically and I can of course also quit uh, in between. That is how you can do very, very convenient, very, very quick debugging in NeoVim. And this video today should not be like a tutorial on setting this up from scratch, I'm going to share my config, you can look it up in my GitHub. And I'm going to show it here to you and I'm going to explain what I'm doing. But that is not, um, you know, I'm not going to type it out for you right now. So what I have in general, maybe to explain this, I'm going to make a separate video about this. But what I have in general is I have a NeoVim config based on lazy NVim. So based on the lazy package manager, I have a bunch of plugins. And this plugin that I'm using right now here is the NVim DAP or DAP, it stands for debug adapter protocol. Uh, basically, you have NVim DAP, which is the whole thing for debugging itself, then you have the extension for Python. And then we also have DAP UI. So we have DAP, we have DAP Python, we have DAP UI, obviously, DAP Python is the Python integration so that it knows what to do in a Python context. Um, DAP UI is this whole user interface here and DAP is just the general plugin that allows all of this to, to work and to happen. So my configuration is not that difficult. My configuration is quite simple. I have some uh, icons here for the various stuff that can happen. So for the uh, stop for the break 
point rejected for uh, a breakpoint that is set. This is basically this icon here on the left side that you can see. Um, and I also have some key binds, but that's basically it. I just have these icons. I have uh, the fact that I want to open up the UI every time I'm starting the, the debugging. So when I say start, it will automatically open up the UI. Um, it will not automatically close it. I don't want to do that. I want to close it manually. And I also have these key binds where I'm basically using my leader key, which is my space key to do certain things uh, in combination with some characters. So I go to a line and I say space DB and it sets a breakpoint. Sa uh, space DB and it unsets the breakpoint. So it basically toggles it. Um, DC or space DC leader DC um, starts the whole thing. I can then choose a configuration, start this. Then I have also leader DQ to end everything. This is the one down here. I have um, step over DO, step into is DI, step out is D capital O or uppercase O. And then I also have DU for toggling the user interface. And this is super, super impressive how good this works right out of the box. Of course, you need to have this configuration but it's super convenient. You can easily do debugging, you can easily just open up the interface. Now I think I closed the wrong file. So let me just briefly jump to my directory here. Uh, but it's so, so simple to, to just use this. So I can just set a breakpoint and start and then choose the configuration run, uh, type in some value here type in another value, then it reaches the breakpoint, then I can do step into then I can do step over step over step over. All of this is extremely easy to navigate with the keyboard, I can of course also use the mouse for everything I can look at these uh, values here with my mouse, I can um, step into with my mouse, I mean, in this case, it uh, doesn't work because there was nothing to step into, I think, but I can step over like this, I can, I'm not sure if I can go back. Uh, no, doesn't support stepping backwards, I can terminate, I think I can also restart. So all of this can be done with the mouse, all of this can, of course, also be done with commands and key binds if I want to. But this is just super convenient. And I wanted to share this because this is super, super awesome. And it doesn't take much. Again, by the time you're watching this video, probably there is a config file on my GitHub, you just have to go to the neural nine GitHub to the config files repository, there you go to NeoVim. Uh, make sure you don't copy the old config, make sure you copy the Lua config, the new one, uh, which I'm going to make a video about soon. But this is super, super impressive. And for me, this is a game changer, because I'm the kind of guy, if I don't have a debug system that I like, and that I'm familiar with, I'm the guy who will print stuff all the time. So if I want to know what's here, I'm just going to say print some nums. And that's it. But now that I have this setup, now that I can just set a breakpoint, and um, actually, let me get rid of all this here. Uh, now that I have the breakpoint and everything now that I have this super easy to use setup, I can just now it still asks Oh, I think I didn't. I didn't save. Is that the reason? There you go. Yeah. Uh, so I have this very convenient setup, where I can just do all of this where I can look into everything. And uh, yeah, for me, that's a game changer, because now this means I will start using the debugger actually, and not just constantly use print and uh, logging in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.